Hi everyone. With YU55 coming up next week, I thought I would get on my Stellarium and bring you an earthbound perspective as if you were sitting in your lawn chair watching it. Give you a little different look of what it'll look like and you can gain some perspective from a different view. Uh, this would be on the 8th from where I'm at from what my perspective would be in the United States in the state of Oklahoma. So it's getting towards lunchtime what most people would be getting ready to eat lunch from their jobs or something and uh, 11.16 is where this is going to start out where I would be able to look at it and we'll play through uh, the rest of the day until we head into the ninth to whenever we have our big warning when the internet and other forms of communication will be cut well, this is a precursor to the exercise of that and this would be about 1400 that would be about 2 o'clock it's rising 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 1600 that would be 4 you can see it's starting to get dark Whoop. this would be 1745 which would be just shy of 6 1800, run out 6, and then we'll let it get a little bit darker, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at where is our moon. in relation to 2005 YU-55. And there's the moon and Jupiter. You can see there's pretty good distance from them in the east. And we come back over here to our friendly YU-55. And we start forward again. can see we're starting to take a dive of what it's the perspective of it seems and this would be 20 24 and that would be 8 24 and then you see the moon and Jupiter are both quite a bit higher now as our friend takes a dive we'll put a little land there so you can see it's getting ready to go below where I would be able to see it twenty one hundred starting to dive pretty good <clears throat> and this will be in the westerly direction here now it's not going to last much longer than where I'll be able to see it pushing for me where I am at 
we're pushing about 2300 pretty close to where I won't be able to probably look if I can see it. And that's being if it's clear and the conditions are right. I don't have the super telescope to look at it with, so. But that's where it lies, 2300 for me for where I'm at. And that's how it looks like it travels and falls off. And when it does that, you're going to be seeing right here Jupiter and the Moon way, way higher away. So I believe everybody will be fine. It'll be, of course be something to definitely be watching out for because anything can change. But as the trajectory is now, it doesn't it doesn't appear to me that the moon is gonna be struck and I don't think it well it doesn't look like any information I've seen that it looks like it's gonna hit the earth or anything it's not from what I've seen I mean that from what I've seen and gotten into there's less less of a chance it would seem for the planet uh, than it is the moon of course now you can see here I backed it up some in case anybody missed that you can see a nice little rise here well it's backwards so it's not actually a rise we're going backwards in time but that's a nice little thing there Venus and Mercury become more visible and noticeable as everything darkens up. And that should be something for stargazers to really get a nice look at. At least these, what I'm talking about. As you can see, everything's moving, constant motion as we turn, as we orbit, everything moves. So you can gain perspective of the movements. So you'll be able to see a lot of stuff. If you got the right things to look at with, and you know where to look, and you know what you're looking at, you may have seen Venus and Mercury like you saw over here, and you'll be able to see YU-55, if, if that be possible. And then, of course, you'll be able to see how possibly uh, the distance between it and the moon. And from what I understand, it's going to be a pretty quick mover. So, it could be hard to capture. I wish everyone luck that tries to. I'm probably going to need a lot of luck to be able to see it from where I'm at. And I'll definitely be looking for it because I know the dangers of it if it were to do anything. If it were to chime the moon, so to speak. Or if it were to make contact here. 
on land or in water. And then we do have this rolling into the ninth for the morning exercise. So it's a lot of stuff to be aware of, but we are aware of it. We're taking precautions, or at least I am, and everyone else should, uh, you know, get ready to press the precaution button in case something more comes up. So that's all I can suggest. And then on the day of uh, that test or the warning exercise, yes, it probably is a, a, a nice idea to probably unplug the things that the, will be cut, the communication devices and such. Go ahead and unplug them and take the battery out of your phone or whatever if the phones are going to be affected. But I know that your internet <clears throat> and your television and things like that will be affected. And there was some talk of worry about loading viruses into computers and whatnot or oh, spyware or whatever they would put. Well, possibly get in after you fire it back up, of course, that's a thought. But it never hurts to take precaution. So for those three minutes, it's not going to hurt anything for everything to be off. I mean, when you take it out voluntarily, as a precaution. So I'd, I'd probably suggest doing that. Make sure that you're, if it's possible, before that time, that you're able to maybe do that. Because we don't really know exactly what's going to happen uh, probably nothing but they are electronic devices and communication devices and whatnot and technology is what it is and I'm sure they have the ability to do a lot of things so I'll let everyone go uh, I checked the earthquakes there wasn't too much to really speak about there were some fours and whatnot, but we seem to be stable for the moment in that respect. God bless everyone. Have a nice day tomorrow. We'll see what's going on when the sun comes up, and I'll speak to you soon. Keep looking up there, because there's a whole lot of stuff to be seen.